Project 36 Bible study in the church. Wait for Mr. Knighton. Wednesday. Mr. Knighton will be traveling. Uh, we're reading Romans 1 through 7. Uh, the second and the fourth Saturdays, Bible study won't be. July 23rd is the Gideon will be here. So, uh, Communion and potluck, July 30th, it's a cookout. We need to bring a grill. Put the burgers on or something. Teen Girls Conference in Norton, August 11th and 12th. Uh, block party, Morgan Coach County. Bands, I'm sure you said you were. Yeah. Uh, CIA services for a sanctuary for kids or young, young, young people. That follows September 15th through the 16th, Faith on Fire Women's Conference. And it says we need 50 volunteers needed for the Todd Becker Foundation. Breakfast August 6th is the night. Uh, any additions to the prayer list? The prayer list wasn't updated, but I would have to print it out, so this is what I should use. Oh, okay. Um, but I do probably take Bill off there. The writer who got cleared to uh, go back to Alaska. So, Bill Green. Yep, he's a writer. And then um, Carol and her um, cancer, she's in remission now, so better. Erin um, Lasley, uh, we probably take her off there too. She's uh, out of the hospital and back to doing better. And I would say I never want to take Kristen off the prayer list, but she is at a point now where she will have this cancer for the rest of her life, whether it's going to show up in places or not, we don't know. So she retests every three months, so. but she's doing good right now, so we could probably take her off. Oh, it's a new one? Okay. Well, he is, he is feeling, she sent me a picture and he's feeling better. He's still, still in ICU. But so she took her medicine and Yeah. Yeah. Look over our list today, Lord. We are fully aware of who's on there and who's not. Who's doing better and who's not. But we ask you to put your hand upon us, pray that only continue to heal their bodies. Pray that we walk out of here today full of our full mind of your word. Ask you to please bless us.
Snapped right on the screwdriver, doesn't it? So they attract and attach themselves to the screwdriver. Is that a good thing? Do you know what happens? I don't know if this will do it or not. Nope. Never mind. I can't show you it. A lot of times on magnets, if you turn them around, the polarities different, and they actually repel instead of. Yeah, they do that. They're uh, yeah. spin and one turn around and it connects them. These don't do that. They do. Sometimes they do. Those won't. Okay, you show them. I'll put them over here. It <laughs> <No. laughs> Is it doing it? Okay. Because that's what I tried to do. Right? So, what do we have in the world that is attracting metal? Metal. The magnets attracting metal, right? Yes. Now, if we take that outside of the. Screwdriver? Yeah, this is a screwdriver. What do you do with the screwdriver? Like screw. You're screwing it, don't you? Yes. What else can you do with the screw? Uh, build stuff. Build stuff. Can you poke your sister with it? No, I don't do that. Okay, good. Well, no, <laughs> I have a sister here. Can you poke Rosie with it? No. You can, but don't. I'm not going to poke her Okay, that's good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Yep. So what is what is something in life that we ought to connect ourselves to? God. God, that's right. And God is and, and how do we go about <coughs> connecting ourselves to God? And praying. What are we doing now? Is this connecting ourselves to God? It's not? Dang, this is a flop. <laughs> Aren't we learning about him today? So does that help us connect with the more we learn about him? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So we come to church to learn more about God so we can be more connected to him. And why do we want to connect ourselves to God? So that when you're in school and you're with your classmates, you know how to treat them? Yes. You treat them well, you treat them like the Bible states. Yes. Are you forgiving? Do you have patience with them? Yes. Yeah, good. So we come to church to learn about God so that we can be more attractive. Not only to God, but also to the people around us, we can be attracting them by the example of God. Right? Yes. If we live a good example, a good life, if we're honest, and we don't lie to people, people like to be around us to attract them to us. And we can, that way we can reach them. We can tell them about Jesus so that they can spend eternity with him. Also. Question for me, what is it? No? All right, so what did we learn today? That magnets attract to metal and that we want to become 
attracted to God. To God, we will attach ourselves to God. And we do that by coming to church, praying, reading the Bible. Right? All right, good. Thank you very much. Hey, where did you get your magnets?
Becoming a good person. Sounds like a uh, self-help thing, doesn't it? It's not. Lord willing, uh, we will uh, understand the, from a biblical standpoint this morning what it means to be a good person in Christ. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who are unaware, there's several different dictionaries out there. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, Webster's, Funk and Wagnall, I mean, all, all, all kinds of dictionaries. So you'll get different interpretations, different meanings. But I want to remind you, there's only one dictionary, one source that we use as Christians. And that's God's Word. Anything other, other than that, okay, you're going to find yourself being led astray. How can I say that? Over time, through the centuries, over and over again, and we talked a little bit about this morning, okay, if we're not true to the scriptures, what happens? We find ourselves So as we go through the the lesson and the, uh, the scriptures and the sermon and, and all that this morning. Let's keep in mind we're talking about God's definition of becoming a good person. Father, we just ask you to bless our time together. Lord, this message is yours, it's not mine. Be with me, Father, as I deliver your word to your people. Guide and watch over us. In Jesus' name, amen. What is goodness? Well, goodness is that which is beneficial in its effect. It means unselfishly doing things to benefit others. Does that come natural? Does that come natural? In and of myself, okay, I'm a very selfish human being. I'll be honest with you. If it's not for me, then... But as I find myself trying to do my best to live for my Savior and to be obedient to Him, I find that I need to go with the biblical definition. Throw that first scripture up there. Psalm 116 and, and verse 12 says this. Anybody want to take a stab at that one? I can't. I can't do this on my own. I can't repay the Lord for all He's done. I can't do it. I come up short every time. But you know something? The Holy Spirit also gives us the desire and, 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 and the means and, and, and the power and, and all, to do good. How much am I relying on the Holy Spirit and how much am I relying on Dan? That's the question each of us has to answer. 
for ourselves this morning. Ephesians 2.10 says, look, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what purpose? For what purpose? For good works. It's always after the fact. You don't work for your salvation. We don't do good works to gain ourselves. It's always after the fact. And it must be that way for or something, something's wrong. Something's wrong. We become Christians through God's grace or undeserved favor. We talked about that this morning. Not because of our own efforts or our goodness, if you will, or our abilities. Our gratitude for, for this free gift is shown in our willingness to be good to others. Hebrews 13 and 16 says this. Don't neglect to do good and to share. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Pretty straightforward. So how do I become good? How, how do I become good? Well, there's four things we're going to talk about. The first and foremost, okay, is we don't become good until there's repentance in our life. What are we repenting of? Okay. The rotten person that Dan is is what I need to repent of. Okay. In my arrogance, I could say that I'm better than anybody else. And in my realization of God's Word, book. Romans you know, 3.12 says this. All have turned away. Together they become useless. I mean, that's kind of strong. There's no one that does good. Not even one. Uh, by the way, um, isn't this on Project 36? So how do we become good? It's, that's what the gospel is all about. The word gospel means good news. And in Mark 1.15, Jesus said, okay, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is near or has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Now the word repent, okay, it means to turn away. It means to do, basically do a, an about face. Turn away and forsake it and, and forget it. But you know, I found over the years a lot of Christians are are like Labradors. Anybody know Labrador? Okay. As I'll come and I'll lay it down, and then I'll go right back to it, and pick it up again. No, no, no! You put. Look, I can't speak for anybody else, but that, that unfortunately, that, that's kind of a pattern for my life. And I constantly have to go to the Lord and say, forgive me. I'm here again. I need strength to get through. And, and once I think I've conquered it, and then what happens? I'm right back at it again. What would happen if Dan would just say, Yes, Lord, and leave it at that.
Well, there's this, the, the next point here is you have something called um, obedience. We're supposed to obey the Bible. Just not, just not fill our heads full of all the stuff, okay, and, and, and try to get it down here. We're supposed to obey? Well, yeah. The Bible is God's word. Would you all agree with that? And it's our manual for living God's way. Not our way, God's way. And sometimes it pinches us. But you know something? We were over here this morning in 2 Timothy 3.16. Weren't we? It's useful for teaching and rebuking and correcting and, and training in righteousness. Now the training part, I enjoy it. The correcting and rebuking part, not so much. But how can I, in 2 Timothy 3.17, how, how can I, what's that say there? Does that say, does that say that, okay, I, I, I'm just going to be better, okay, I, I still got to work. If I'm reading this correctly, it says, so that the man or woman of God okay, may be complete and equipped for every good work. Now we just talked about being good and, and, and working for the Lord and, and that type of thing. I'm wondering, just, just wondering, Wondering out loud here. If I spent more time with my Savior and, and more time reading His Word and finding out what He wants me to do, this would become a little easier, wouldn't it? Become a little more complete. The next thing we need to guard our eyes. Okay? Guard our eyes. Sin will always start with our eyes. And our eyes are what? Okay? They're the doors or windows to our mind. Now I want to caution you on something. When we talk about guarding our eyes, okay? Yes, we're talking, talking about the filth of the world. Okay? We're talking about the porn. We're talking about all the, the negative things. But I'm here to tell you, more often than not, what happens, okay, is we get, we get distracted by the good things, by the good things, and they distract us even more so than the negative things. Well, how can that be? This is all good. It is. Nobody's going to say this. It, it's not. Okay, you, you can do a lot of good things, and you can focus on the wrong thing, and it's good. How does that make sense? Simply put, if our gaze or focus is not on Jesus, we're in trouble. Pure and simple. Matthew 6, 23, it says this, but if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be filled with darkness. Man. What we read, what 
affects how we live. There's that old saying, whatever gets your attention, gets you. But I like some of these old time preachers. They used to say this a lot, but we don't hear it so much anymore. It's from Philippians uh, 3, uh, 13 through, through 14. And just, and just basically just to put it in, in, in a couple of words. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the prize. What's Paul saying? Paul's saying, look, focus on your Savior. That's your prize. That's your goal. That's where you need to be. Psalm 119, 37 says, Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Again, look, we all know we don't need the, the bad things. Okay? We need to take those out of our life. Absolutely. Absolutely. But how many of us have missed God's best because we want to, all these good things are in our way? Fourth thing is keep the end in mind. Keep the end in mind. This means we need to keep the goal of our Christian lives ever before us. Now, yes, we want to serve our Lord, but each of us, God has given us certain gifts. Ooh, remember that? Anyway, um, and we're to utilize those for him. Collectively here as, as a church and individually. Matthew 25 and verse 21 okay, the, the second part of that okay, notice that, 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 that last phrase there. Share your master's joy. Share your master's joy. What does that mean? What does that mean? John 17, 4. After the, uh, the Last Supper, Jesus uh, looks back uh, on his good love, his good life or whatever. And he says this, I have glorified you on the earth by completing the work you gave me to do. We are to be like Jesus. So we can stand before our Heavenly Father and say the same thing. How many of us will be able to say this? I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. Yeah, that, thank you. Nowhere in God's Word, and we talked about it in Sunday school this morning, nowhere in God's Word does it tell you that it's going to be easy. Nowhere. 
It encourages to be faithful. Okay. We, we are supposed to gather around each other and encourage and, and build one another up. So what? So we can get through what God has for us. So we can stand before him and say, look, I brought glory on the mission that you've given me to do. Now let's talk about when we should be good. I'm not liking this part too well. I'll be honest with you. We're supposed to be good when we're wrong. Okay, when's the last time you were wrong? Probably sometime this past week. Nothing reveals whether or not we are good. Like how we react when someone wrongs. Evil people are going to try to get us. But also evil people try to get evil and harbor bitterness. But what does Luke 6.27 say? Luke 6.27 says this, but I tell you who hear me, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. I can't speak for anybody else this morning, but I can tell you this, that's not Dan's nature. That's not Dan's nature. Dan's nature, okay, is this. It may not be today, but I will get you. And I will plan for years. And then when I get you, I will stand there and go, ha, I got gotcha. you. And enjoy every moment of it. And does that represent our Christ? Does that represent the Lord that I'm supposed to be serving? Absolutely not. Is it easy, is it easy to, to love your enemies? No. It's always wrong to retaliate because it's an endless cycle of evil. I get you, you get me. I get you, you get me. Where's it at? It doesn't. All through my life, and I even hear it sometimes today. Be the better man. Be the better person. You don't have to respond. Oh, but I do. No, you don't. No, you don't. Romans 12, 21 says this, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So what happens here? What's happening here is, look, I can't. I can't do this. In and of myself. I can't. But I can conquer that evil with good, with God's help, with God's help. So often we want to hang on to this and, and just struggle and say, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. And he'll help you, but what do I have to do? I 
I got to quit trying. Oh, well. I've got to release it. When should we do good? When we're discouraged. Trying to do good in an evil world is very, very discouraging. And the number one weapon that our enemy has for us is discouragement. Is discouragement. You go ahead and throw that, that next verse up there. <clears throat> it reminds me, now let me back up here momentarily. Your enemy okay, is going to smack you right in the mouth. Make no bones about it. Okay. He's going to hit you. He's going to hit you hard. And if you're not prepared for it, case in point, I always kind of uh, played on the edge when I played football. I wasn't a dirty player, okay? I wasn't exactly a clean one, so I don't know, you know, you, you can just draw, draw your own conclusions from that one. But as we do once in a while, we get to share war stories for other people. And uh, this guy was telling me what they did. And I wish we could have done it, but I never had the courage to tell the coach that we could. We could. So let me tell you what happened. You come out to the middle of the field, the coin's tossed, Okay, whatever it is, okay, you choose defense first. Every time. Everything gets it into play, okay, defense takes the field, offense comes up, offense comes up to the line, and usually what happens when the offense comes up, what happens when the offense comes up to the line? set, okay, or you know, calls out a signal or whatever. First audible word, the defense smacks everybody in the face. Boom! We'll spot you five yards. Go ahead. What's that do to the offense? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. And that's not exactly clean play. Never forget, your enemy doesn't play fair. Galatians 6, 9 says this. So you must not get tired of doing good. Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired. And how many of us, at the end of the day, say, Lord, I'm tired? Or how many of us have come and down here at times and just say, Lord, I'm tired? How am I supposed to? To keep doing good. I can't do it on my own. I need my Savior. I need Him every day. 24-7. Every moment of every day. Because I know who Dan is. Dan wants to give up. 
God says, you're not supposed to get tired. Lord, And it reminds me of who is Dan? Whose energy is Dan doing the work? Mine or his? See, some of you already know this. But sometimes, you know, pastors get so busy doing church. But their relationship with the Lord goes by the wayside. Oh, I'm doing God's work. Okay. That's one of the good things. And I think each and every one of you has been in that boat. Lord, I'm serving you. But when's the last time? Right? For those of you who, who don't know already, okay, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. What is it? What? Psalm 46.10. Be still and know and know that I'm God. Make sure that we are using the biblical definition of being good. And being that good person. And to represent our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for who you are. Lord, so many times Dan just needs to stop. Just stop. Help us to understand that we are nothing without you. Help us to seek out a, a, a mentor. And help us navigate some of these waters. Help us to lift one another up. When the enemy is relentless, and when we need to be encouraged to lift one another up. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Power on. Bluetooth pairing. Bluetooth connected. Thank you.